found this question randomly going through Reddit. A, B, C, D, E, F is a regular hexagon with side length X. A, B, C, D, E, F, this smaller one. This hexagon is enlarged, center F, by a scale factor P to give this larger hexagon. Now the reason they're telling you that it's center F is because we are enlarging about this point, meaning this point doesn't change. So this point here remains unchanged. So it's kind of like blown it up like this, all right? To give this larger hexagon, show that the shaded area is that interesting looking thing. Now I didn't put it at the beginning because I just wanted to show you what it was. Uh, otherwise it would look quite messy. They're talking about this area here on the outside. Okay, they're saying show that this area is given by this. Well, obviously the way to do this is we're gonna do the big hexamagon minus the small hexamagon, yeah? All right, so let's do that. I'm just gonna draw them separately. Let's take the uh, smaller one and let's explore how we work out the area of a hexagon. Now, because it's regular, all the side lengths are X, and the way we do this is we split it up into six equal triangles. Not equilateral, just equal triangles. These are all isosceles triangles, all right? I'm just gonna focus on the bottom one. I'm just gonna call this X, okay? And I wanna find this area. Now, in this case, 360 degrees, we're splitting that up into six different triangles, which makes this 60 degrees. Well, actually, if these are isosceles, and that is 60, it does actually make the other angles 60, which means it is equilateral, but I never want you guys to assume, all right? So this 60, both of these base lengths would be 60. Base angles, sorry. Well then, if it is equilateral, it means all the side lengths are the same. So all of these are X. And now we can find this area by doing half AB sine C. This is non-calculator, by the way. For sure, I don't think it'd be a calculator question anyway. So half AB sine C is the area of a non right angle triangle. So we're gonna have a half. Doesn't matter which way you look at, AB, so X times X, sine of the angle 60 degrees. Now you guys need to know, so X times X is X squared. Sine of 60 is root three over two. So we're left with root three over four. So root three times one, root three over two times two, four, X squared. Now that's just the area of one of these. There's six of them. So the small hex is six lots of root three over four, X squared. Now we can simplify that. We can divide top and bottom by two here, cross cancellation and that CCs. Four divided by two is two. Six divided by two is trez. So we have three root three, X squared, all over two in the bottom. Now, for the big hexagon, we just do the exact same thing. It's just the side lengths have changed. We're increasing by a scale factor of P, okay? meaning we're multiplying all these lengths by P, all right? So for the large hex, we're just gonna do the same thing, all right? So we're gonna do six lots of, six lots of this, but this came from this, all right? But it's not X anymore, it's PX, all right? So this side length here is PX everywhere because we have enlarged it by a scale factor of P, okay? So it's a half, it's not XX anymore, it's PX, PX, sine of 60. Okay, that bit doesn't change because if I was to draw this equilateral triangle, you'd still have that 60 degrees, it's just an enlarged version, all right? A half of six is three, so we have three, then P times P is P squared, X times X, X squared, and then sine 60 is root three over two like before. Okay, so this simplifies to three root three over two, P squared, X squared. All right, now we do the subtraction. So the shaded is this area, which is three root three over two, P squared, X squared, minus this, three root three, 
over 2x squared. All right, the last thing we need to do is we need to factorize. Okay, that's what they've done. To be honest, guys, if you go from this straight to this, you'd get full marks, okay? But let's just understand what we're doing. So we can see in both of these terms, there is a 3 root 3 over 2. So we can write that on the outside. Open a bracket. Close a bracket. But also, they have x squared. We can factorize that out as well. But they've written at the end here. Not sure why. They just wanted to do that. What would be left? Well, we got rid of this. We got rid of this. We're left with p squared. Minus. Then here, we're just left with 1. Okay, you can think of this as having a giant coefficient of 1 times all of this. You've taken these away. We are left with 1. And that is proved. I'm not sure how many marks this is worth. Probably about five though. All right, it was question 26 from what I saw in the screenshot from Reddit. But yeah, guys, make sure you head to the Lungang Reddit if you want to submit questions as well. And if you learned something, hit the like button. I really appreciate it. Subscribe for more mass content. And if you're interested in my GCSE courses, there is links in the description. I'll see you guys in the next video. Nice.